Will the Apple iPhone 14 provide Starlink satellite service? Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for tea time today. We have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness of the lap song. So good, guys. So good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. It is a combination of Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink, as well as Apple. Apple had their far out event when they introduced their new hardware for the season. And I find it fascinating that we see Apple's new iPhone 14 is going to have satellite service. And at the time I was speculating when I heard about this, who are they using? Are they using SpaceX Starlink or are they not? And I did a bunch of research about it. And I wanna share this with you and I wanna get your thoughts about this. As I always do, I like to dive in a little bit deeper instead of just the kind of broad paint that we see on some of the channels out there. I wanna get in a little bit tighter. And that's what we do here. Now, I'm gonna read to you a couple of articles I read, and then I wanna give you my commentary as I always do, and then ask for your thoughts. Once again, your thoughts are more important than mine. Before we get into it, I wanna say that if you have not downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you just wanna say thank you, there's now a thank you button right down there. You can click on that or even better, become a member of the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, even in the least, you'll probably like some of my other Starlink coverage. Go check out my Starlink playlist. Also, give the video a thumbs up if you like it and click this little button over here so when I go live and when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Subscribe, guys, subscribe. So let's dive into it. Now, some of this article came from 9to5Mac. It starts out by saying, Apple finally announced the iPhone 14 lineup at its far out event. Among all of the new features, both the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Pro support satellite connectivity for the first time. Apple promotes satellite connectivity as an emergency feature, so it is not meant to replace regular cellular connectivity. First, satellites are constantly moving and are very high in the sky. This means you first need to find a signal before you can start communication. The iPhone 14 guides you to point the device in the right direction until the satellite connection is established. Apple notes that this feature only works outdoors with, quote, a clear view of the sky. Once your iPhone is connected to the satellite, you can call an emergency service when there is no cellular signal coverage from your carrier. Satellite connectivity can also be used to share your location with friends and family via the Find My app. Since it takes some time to establish connection with the satellites, iPhone will ask the users a few questions while the device is searching for a signal. This includes questions such as, what's the emergency? Who needs help? And is anyone injured? Then the iPhone automatically sends a text message with all these details to a local relay station. Apple says it has created a compression algorithm that makes text messages three times smaller to make communication faster since bandwidth is low compared to a cellular network. That makes sense, I can see that. But remember, text messages are just bits, very, very small amount of bytes. In total anyways, making them three times smaller, I guess could be helpful. At first, satellite connectivity will be available in the US and Canada starting in November. Apple says that the service will be offered free for two years for iPhone 14 buyers. After that, there will be a cost to enable satellite connectivity, but the price is unclear. So, like I said, the question that I have is, will Apple use SpaceX Starlink for this satellite service, for this emergency SOS type of service that they're talking about here? And after reading a bunch of articles and doing a bunch of research, the answer is no. I was kind of amazed by this. And I wanna to read to you a couple of things that I think are very important here for this conversation. Now, CNBC had an article that I read that it said, mobile satellite communication company Global Star saw its shares jump as much as 42% after being halted 
for news during the Wednesday trading session. The company disclosed during Apple's annual fall hardware launch, or as they call it, the far out event, that it would be operating the satellite powered emergency SOS service for the forthcoming iPhone 14. So the answer is it's not SpaceX Starlink, it's this Global Star people. Now, they continue by saying Global Star's infrastructure launched in the late 1990s through a partnership with Lowell Space and Communications and Qualcomm. The Louisiana-based company filed for bankruptcy and received backing from a private-held investment firm called Thermo before a 2006 initial public offering. This stock is like $1, guys literally one dollar so this is a very very small company now according to analysts what they have wrote is that global star now sees a 2023 revenue between 185 million and 230 million depending partly on the degree in which it achieves goals tied to the apple deal when I researched the company itself, just to see how this all works and how many satellites and where are the satellites, what I found was this company has 40 satellites currently in orbit. That's right, 40. And the connectivity goes from a gateway or a ground station, or is what I call a pop, to a switched telephone or internet network is how it works. And what they state is that a satellite must have a gateway station in view to provide service for any user. So keep that in mind. I'll get back to that. That is very important. Global Star has 24 of these gateways. Now remember, a satellite must have a gateway in view for it to provide any service at all. There is 24 of them and they're located all around the world. And seven of them are in North America. Seven. Now, to kind of break this down, 32 of the satellites out of the 40 that they have are sitting in LEO, which isn't bad. That's low Earth orbit, which is about 550 kilometers from Earth, whereas the other handful are sitting much higher at 1,400 kilometers. So they have literally 32 LEO satellites altogether. So my question is, is why would Apple select a company or get into bed with a company that is so minuscule, that is so small, that has gone bankrupt, that's being like held up by its bootstraps, that has 32, let's say, LEO satellites available, 24 ground stations, seven sitting there in the US only, seven. I don't get it. I really don't get it. This is a tiny company. Is Apple just going to acquire them? That's what I was thinking. And I read in a little bit deeper and what Apple has said is that they can elect to receive warrants to buy up to 2.64% of Global Star's outstanding stock for one dollar and one penny per share. So maybe that's what they're doing. But you know, for me, warrants for two, let's even three percent of the company is like nothing. It's literally nothing. They could buy the entire company. It's like a like a grain of sand on the beach. Just buy the whole thing out if they wanted to. But once again, why are they doing this? You know, it's just very odd to me why Apple would go with Global Star instead of SpaceX Starlink, right? There is such a disparity. I mean, number one, instead of having 40 satellites like Global Star has, 32 in Leo and the rest sitting at 1,400 kilometers, which are useless, let's call them. It's very slow, let's call it. Um, whereas currently we have Starlink has 3,000 satellites, you know, 40 satellites, let's give them the benefit of the doubt, 40 satellites to 3,000. I mean, SpaceX Starlink launches like 50 plus satellites like every week, sometimes 100 satellites in a week. It's like all satellites that they have ever since like the 1990s, they launch like per week. I, I, that doesn't make sense. Number two, instead of having 24 gateways, or let's call them POPs or point of presence or ground stations. Starlink has 40 just in the United States alone, not seven, 40, and a ton more globally all around the world. Number three, and even more importantly, SpaceX Starlink is getting in bed with T-Mobile for both connectivity as well as backhauling. So their footprint is going to be massive in comparison to this tiny global star. Once again, I don't get it. One last thing. 
Going back to the fact that Global Star says, quote, a satellite must have a gateway station in view to provide service to any users. This is massive. Like I said, there's seven gateways in the entire United States. There's 24 worldwide. This service is going to be abysmal at best. I mean, look at the disparity. You have SpaceX Starlink now having version 1.5s and now coming 2.0s that have onboard laser communication devices. What does this mean? That means that if someone is sitting at this location and there's a satellite, a Starlink satellite here, but there's no ground station anywhere near here, it's okay because they will take that information and radio it at the speed of light to this satellite over here via that, once again, laser communication from satellite to satellite all the way to this one and then go down to the ground station over here. So once again, SpaceX Starlink is not going to need a lot of ground stations as this network of laser communicating satellites get bigger and bigger and bigger. You follow what I'm saying here? So I just, I simply don't get it. I don't get it at all. So why did Apple not go with Elon Musk? That is the big question. Now I was looking through some quotes from Tim Cook as well as Elon Musk. I remember back in December 2020 when Elon Musk was quoted in saying this. During the darkest days of the Model 3 program, I reached out to Tim Cook to discuss the possibility of Apple acquiring Tesla for one-tenth of its current value. He refused to take the meeting. Bad blood? Maybe? Now, Tim Cook was quoted in saying this, I have great admiration and respect for the company he has built. This obviously in reference to Elon Musk. I don't know, guys. I really don't know. I have a feeling that Tim Cook and Elon Musk just don't play together well. That's my personal opinion. More importantly, I want to know what you think. In the comment area below this video, let's have this discussion. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, please throw the video a thumbs up. I appreciate that very much so. And click this little button over here after you subscribe to the channel. So when I go live, when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Love you all.